Welcome to Engineer's Fight. We'll discuss Compass Survey. All those get questions with the concepts. So let's begin. So the first thing is that what is the bearing? Bearing is nothing but it is the angle between of a line with respect to a fixed direction or fixed reference. Suppose in the field I have measured a line using a chain OA and I want to find the bearing and I have taken the fixed direction as the north direction. So the angle between this north direction to my measured line whichever the distance I have measured OA and the angle from north and to this OA will be theta and this theta is known as the bearing. So bearing is of two types. So the first one is whole circle bearing, whole circle bearing and it is also known as azimuth bearing system. Two types of bearing system, first one is whole circle bearing system and I have represented as WCB. And the second one is quadratal system of bearings and it is also known as reduced bearing system. So two type of system whole circle bearing and quadratal system of bearings. So the important point is that first thing the direction or reference will be always from north here the direction or reference will be from north or south why we are taking north or south i will we'll discuss that whichever the whichever is nearer north or south in this the angle with angle e is valid from 0 degree to 360 degree here the angle is between 0 degree to 90 degree what is the representation of the angle? Representation of the whole circle bearing is simply theta. Here representation will be north or south or anything. We will discuss about that how to represent. So first thing is that let's find the WCB. Suppose this north south east and west. This is the line AB light in the first quadrant and the whole circle bearing is that simply this simply theta A. And again suppose there is a line which lie in this quadrant lie in this quadrant and the whole circle bearing is that always from north i have to take the angle always from north and that will be theta b suppose there is a line which lie in this quadrant this quadrant and all again i have to take the fixed reference as north and from the north the angle between north and to this line is theta c Again, the angle between north and to this line will be theta d. I hope you have understood the quadratal whole circle bearing system. Now we will discuss the quadratal system of bearings. Suppose this is north and this is south, this is east and this is west. So, suppose 
my line lies in this quadrant and what will be the quadrilateral system of bearings whichever is nearer to this line north or south so whichever is nearer north is nearer so the angle between north and to this line will be theta a so how i represent this so i can represent this north theta a what after that that is east again suppose there is a line here so whichever is nearer south is nearer or north is nearer south is nearer so whichever is nearer that is theta b so how i represent this south theta b east suppose there is a line here and this angle is given as theta c so what will be my representation so whichever is nearer so north or south whichever is nearer south is nearer so angle between south and this line so whatever the angle what will be the angle 90 degree okay minus theta c so what will be my representation south 90 degree minus theta c west again if there is a line here and the angle is theta d my representation will be north theta d west so i hope these things are cleared so please note down by pause the video so now we'll discuss true meridian so we know there is a brightest star above the earth surface hindi mein usko dhruv tara bolte hain so the astronomical surveyors what they do they took a projection from that brightest star to the earth surface when they took a projection from that brightest star to the earth surface and the projection simply bisect the earth at a point that i have denoted as north again the projection simply continues again it bisect the earth at another point that is i have denoted as south and this north is known as north pole or geographical north this is also known as true north and this south is also known as south pole or geographical south and it is known as true south why i am calling it as true north and true south because it don't change with place and time so what is the true meridian suppose i am at some point on the earth surface and i want to find the true meridian so what i did that i have taken a line joining the point i am standing and there is a north pole and there is a south pole so the line which joining north pole and south pole and that passes the place where i am taking the meridian that is known as true meridian and the bearing with respect to true meridian is known as true bearing so and this suppose this is a line i have measured and i want to find the true bearing so whatever the true north and the line and the angle between true north and this line will be true bearing one thing for sure true meridian don't change with place and time so for the larger surveys we know uh, we require the true meridian and that we have we calculate the true bearing and for the smaller surveyors we generally take magnetic bearing so first note down true meridian then we'll discuss magnetic bearing pause the video and please note it down so now we'll discuss magnetic meridian so what i do i'm standing here at a place and i take a magnet and i simply tie it with the help of a string and i hung like this so what we'll do the magnet will show its direction magnetic north and magnetic south and the line we join the magnetic north and magnetic south and that line a line passes the place where i am standing that is known as magnetic meridian 
and the bearing which is measured with respect to magnetic meridian is known as magnetic bearing so you can note like this the la suppose this is a place i'm standing on the earth surface and i simply hung the magnet it shows the south and north and what i did i join a line along the curvature of the earth there is magnetic north there is magnetic south and this is the place where standing and the line join magnetic north and magnetic south and it passes to the place that is known as magnetic meridian and there is a line which i have measured i have denoted magnetic north and the bearing from the magnetic north to this line is known as magnetic bearing so please note it down after that we'll continue we use compass for the small surveyors and the compass gives us magnetic bearing but we require true bearing as we know that true bearing is correct and the true meridian don't change with place and time at the time of measurement using a compass we fi find the magnetic bearing but we require the true bearing at some times we find there is a difference between true meridian and magnetic meridian and that difference is known as declination and that declination is a error which we have to eliminate so let's discuss declination it is the horizontal angle between the true meridian and the magnetic meridian and the declination is of two types first one is eastern declination means the declination towards east so you can see this is the true meridian and this is the magnetic meridian and the difference between true meridian and the magnetic meridian is known as the declination though the declination is towards east this is known as the eastern declination so you can see that this is the declination and angle between true meridian and magnetic meridian and what is true bearing from true north so true north is this from true north to this line is known as true bearing and what is magnetic bearing magnetic north to this line this is known as magnetic bearing so what will be the true bearing so true bearing will be magnetic bearing plus delta e from the diagram also you can see that true bearing is magnetic bearing plus delta e you can remember this or while solving the question i will tell you the trick which you have to nothing to remember but for your understanding i am telling this while solving the questions i will tell the trick and you don't have to remember anything but as for proceeding let me tell these things next is that western declination so though you can see the declination is towards west so this is known as western declination so you can see the angle between true meridian and magnetic meridian this is known as declination and this is western declination and again the true bearing that is angle between true north to this line this is true bearing and the magnetic bearing means magnetic north to this line this is known as magnetic bearing this total is known as magnetic bearing this is known as true bearing so what will be the true bearing that is the magnetic bearing minus declination so please note it down and i hope you have understood this and while solving the questions it will be easier please note it down so we use compass for the traverse survey and the traverse is of two types one is open traverse another one is closed traverse for the closed traverse if i have started my survey work from a particular station i need to end my survey work at that particular station only traverse is nothing but it's a framework means there are many stations like this many stations and at some particular point i need to end my survey work so suppose from the traverse i have taken two stations and from the two stations this is the station and to this station i want to carry my survey work so this is the direction of the survey line so on this direction i want to carry my survey work using a compass whatever the angle i am getting during the traverse survey during the direction of the survey work that is known as four bearing means this is the station and i want to find the angle during the survey work and during the direction of the survey work this is the four bearing and what and suppose this is the uh, this is the station 
and whatever the angle I am getting to this station to the previous station that is known as back bearing. So direction opposite to the survey work that is known as back bearing. Why we require fore bearing and back bearing? Because the difference between fore bearing and back bearing should be 180 degree. To rectify this, we calculate both fore bearing and back bearing to check whether the stations are free from error and free from local attraction. So you need to note this as fore bearing, bearing measured from one station to adjacent next station this is the station and this is the next station in the direction of the traverse is known as fore bearing. So what is the back bearing? Bearing measured from one station to adjacent previous station. So this is the station and this is the previous station and I want to find the bearing that is known as back bearing. So difference in fore bearing and back bearing should be always be equal to 180 degree. If the difference is not equal to 180 degree there are local attraction and local attraction is an error which will understand while solving a good very good get question so please note down this so another thing for no error in the measurement the difference of forbearing and back bearing is always 180 degree if the forbearing is less than 180 degree the back bearing should be forbearing plus 180 degree what do, uh, what does this mean so suppose this is the forbearing this is less than 180 degree because this is the first quadrant and the first quadrant is of 90 degrees. So it is less than 180 degree. So you can see that the back bearing will be. So this is the fore bearing. This will be also the fore bearing and the back bearing will be and this will be the 180 degree. So the back bearing will be fore bearing plus 180 degree. Again, if fore bearing is greater than 180 degree for another case, you can see or you can note from a test book just see that fore bearing is greater than 180 degree the back bearing should be fore bearing minus 180 degree so please note it down and we'll don't remember anything because while solving the question i will tell the tricks you don't need to remember anything but for now for your understanding please note it down so we have finished all those important concepts as for gate exam point of view all those numerical things and concepts for the theoretical things you can read from a textbook like the declination occurred due to variation variation is of four types and the types of compass prismatic surveyors all those theoretical things you can read from a textbook whatever the numerical point of view and the important concepts from the numerical exam like gate and IES exam type I, I will discuss so this finishes this video in the next video we will solve all those gate questions from the compass survey in which I will tell all those tricks don't remember anything but for your better understanding just revise the things whatever I have told in the next video we will solve all those gate questions from compass survey so thank you for watching See you in the next video.